This is AP YouthNet. Welcome to the AP YouthNet talk show where we look at key issues regarding youth employment in Asia and the Pacific. From the International Labour Organization, I'm Matthew Koniak. In this show, we will explore what role and impact trade unions have on young people and also how they can help them voice out their labour rights. Joining me today from Brussels is Sharon Barrow, who was appointed as General Secretary of the International Trade Union Confederation, the ITUC, in 2010. The ITUC promotes and defends workers' rights and interests. It is their global voice. Sharon, thank you so much for joining us on the show today. Under your leadership in the past four years, the ITUC has been involved in a number of important campaigns. Those include the post-2015 development framework, the campaign for domestic workers, the campaign for women in leadership, the World Day for Decent Work, Playfair for better working conditions in the sports industry, the Qatar 2022 rerun of the vote, and importantly for this show, the Get Organized Youth Platform. Now, is it possible to ask you what are the two or three main actions undertaken by ITUC that you think will have or have had the the greatest impact, and also what you see are the, the key major challenges ahead in the coming months or years? Well, in regard to uh, the global economy, it's no more stable than it was seven years ago. So we have now a huge impact on people. Unemployment, inequality, these things are very serious. The unemployment uh, levels are at historic highs and the risk is now that unemployment will become structural. Indeed, uh, young people make up almost half of those people who are at risk of never having a job. So when you think about that, it's almost we are almost facing a lost generation and that's a scandal. So one of our largest priorities, of course, is to see unemployment, job-centred growth, not just jobless growth, but job-centred growth, so that we can genuinely kickstart the real economy, see an end to speculation, and indeed uh, investment in those areas of an economic future that will guarantee people both jobs, fair distribution policies, uh, and, and therefore social protection. People are very, very vulnerable, and our young people, along with women, are the most vulnerable people now in uh, in terms of our societies and their working lives. Yeah, and, and now talking precisely about the most vulnerable, talking about the young people, the ITUC of course promotes workers' rights and interests, but at the same time, uh, the young people seem to be least represented in uh, trade unions. How, in your view, in your opinion, can trade unions more efficiently help young people's voices to be heard and also to be recognised in the world of work? Well, when young people aren't in work, and when in fact they are in work, it's precarious work in the main, then it's very easy to understand why they are not feeling uh, uh, able to be part of trade unions. So we have to reach out to them. We have to make sure that our models of unionism actually encompass workers, particularly those in the informal sector. If you look at the global workforce, there's around 2.9 billion workers, uh, give or take uh, one or two or three. 60% of them are in the formal economy, but their jobs are increasingly precarious. And 40% are in the desperation of the informal sector where, where there are no rules, no labour rights, no minimum wages, no social protection. And indeed, young people and women are the victims of informality. So one of the major tasks coming up in the ILC is the debate with the employers on how we formalise the informal economy. Young people stand to gain everything if we can organise them where they are in fact uh, in work or looking for work so that their voices can be heard and that's a major challenge for the unions but I believe in our forthcoming uh, ITC Congress in May we'll see a lot of good news stories from domestic workers to uh, marginalised agricultural workers to waste pickers to people in the uh, streets, the street vendors. We are organising those workers and many, many young people are amongst them. Now, precisely, you talk about the third ITUC Congress, which will take place in Berlin 
this coming May. It will have a great focus area on union growth. Um, and, and really linking to this discussion, what are some of the innovative approaches that you have come across and that can help engage young people? Well, when you consider that uh, with the work of CEWA and other uh, unions, our global sector in the services area, Uni, has actually affiliated a million street vendors in India alone. When you look at StreetNet in South Africa and many other examples, those workers are now involving themselves in uh, legislative uh, arrangements to guarantee them both uh, engagement in, uh, in planning engagement in uh, social dialogue with the uh, local government so that they can protect their own uh, capacity to set up their businesses, but also the debate around social protection and how you afford social protection and minimum wages for wage-dependent workers in that sector. If you, were, if you look at many of these areas, domestic workers, with the Domestic Workers Convention of the ILO, we didn't uh, stop there. We challenge governments, we're now up to 18, to ratify the convention, to change their labour laws. We've got about 12 new unions. We've got an international domestic workers alliance, up to uh, 100,000 new members. But most importantly, we've probably formalised the jobs of around 12 million workers. And it's an easy recipe. Labour rights for uh, domestic workers a minimum wage on which uh, they can live, and social protection. This is a simple recipe, and it works not just for domestic workers, but indeed for workers in other sectors. Sharon, when it comes to uh, young people being introduced to the world of work at an early age, we, we often put on the table one of the key solutions being that of internships and particularly apprenticeship programs. What is the role of trade unions with apprenticeship? And tell us a little bit about uh, your association with the uh, uh, employers on, on the question of apprenticeships. There's no doubt that while we are creating jobs uh, for uh, everybody, young people can be included in the workforce immediately if we scale up apprenticeships and if we broaden those quality apprenticeships to include uh, uh, women's uh, employment or sectors where women dominate in employment. We have an agreement with the employers globally that apprenticeships, along with investment and formalising the informal economy, that these are priority areas and they all impact on young people. We have advocated to the, uh, to the G20 and they've agreed that quality apprenticeships are essential. Now we need to do the work. We need uh, industry councils in every country. We need uh, social dialogue, a tripartite discussion in every nation. And we need investment that makes sure young people have a chance, have a start in the workplace with the, the educational support and the work experience that quality apprenticeships can deliver. Now, there is another uh, subject I wanted to touch on because, as we know, the young people are, of course, very worried about their employment prospects, and, and, and rightly so. But they're also worried about the, the question of climate change. And, um, and I know that there is a, a lot that trade unions can do to, to help promote or encourage the creation of the so-called green jobs. Can you give us some examples of uh, what interaction uh, ITUC or trade unions have as regard green jobs? Well, the trade unions are absolutely uh, demanding of climate action. We're appalled by governments who haven't taken their responsibilities seriously to set us on a path to a low carbon economy. There are simply no jobs on a dead planet. And we know that when you invest in uh, green jobs, in, when you invest in greening all jobs in the transition to a low carbon future, then you actually get the uh, multiplier impact of industry policy. If you look at Germany, they've created 400,000 new jobs in the uh, renewable energy sector in just a couple of years. Our own research shows that 2% investment in just the 12 countries we studied each year for five years would generate 48 million new jobs. So this is a win-win. We have to do something about ensuring sustainability for the planet, but in the process we can see investment in jobs and in a just transition that will give hope to people for a more secure future. 
it's beyond time and uh, we need to see action on the way to Peru and indeed Paris next year. Sharon Burrow, General Secretary of the International Trade Union Confederation, thank you so much for joining us today on the APUFNET talk show. And uh, please join us again next time. Until then, log on the APUFNET at apufnet.ilo.org for the latest on youth employment in Asia and the Pacific. From the ILO Regional Office in Bangkok, I'm Matthew Koniak. Thank you and goodbye. This has been an APUFNET production.